I'm gonna try to keep this shorter than 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. We are working on the learning path called Junior Penetration Tester on TryHackMe and yesterday's video was walking an application. Uh, it's the second one. I mean the third one because previously we've done pen testing fundamentals, principles of security and then we've gone into introduction to web hacking, walking an application and today we're going to start working on the content discovery one. Now, I, I may not be able to go through it entirely today, which is why uh, this can probably expand in multiple videos, depending on the time that I'm actually taking to complete this one. But the, the idea is that I do not necessarily have to go through it in one video, which is okay, because there's a lot of room for information on YouTube. That being said, I want to re-emphasize on the fact that I'm probably not the only one who's doing these uh, paths, walkthroughs for these paths on TryHackMe. And that's okay. But instead of me having to push and spam the internet with the same information all over again, I'm going to try to actually add my own personal twist to everything that's in here. So that's actually where the value comes from in these videos, which is why you need to share them everywhere, because that actually tells me that I should be doing this, because doing this is actually taking from my free time, and actually I'm not putting in the work in penetration tests, in my pen tests that actually bring money on the table. This is for my free time, YouTube doesn't pay me anything. So at least maybe $40 a month in revenue, which is in ad revenue, which is like insignificant where I'm living right now. Firstly, we should ask in the context of web application security, what is content? Content can be many things. So let me make sure that I'm actually recording here. Content can be many things. So machine should probably be is started content is files videos pictures backup a website feature when we talk about content discovery we're not talking about the obvious things we can see on a website it's the things that aren't immediately presented to us that weren't always intended for public access this content could be for example pages or portals intended for staff usage of course so when you're in when you're doing penetration testing or when you're in cybersecurity you're actually talking about content in the terms of information that is accessible and should not be accessible whatever type or whatever piece of information is, but should not be accessible. Backup files, configuration files, administration panels, etc. There are three main ways of discovering content on a website, which we'll cover manually, automated, and OSINT. I would actually say that this is a good categorization manually, automated, and OSINT. Start the attack box by clicking the blue. All right, learning how to use TryHackMe. What is the content discovery method that, <laughs> come on, I mean, seriously, this is why I'm saying that I don't like CTFs or CTF-ish stuff. Um, I don't want to brag about, but try hack me, you being the one who created this room, this is not a good start. Manually. What is the content discovery automated and OSINT? All right, moving on, manual discovery, robust.txt. This is, this is something that I've um, actually used and I'm using when I talk about automated um, stuff, most especially when it comes to the little amount of time that I devote to bug bounties and uh, for this uh, I would just actually have to take the opportunity and say thanks for 
getting another private invite last night from one of the platforms actually in this case was from Buckroud. so Buckroud, thanks for the private invite i'm not really sure that i'm going to be able to honor it but we'll see i might check it out today so what i wanted to say that as i am actually using the robots.txt a lot and i'm using it a little bit different than other people maybe some people use it like i use it and that is i've actually i've written two or three scripts that help me parse the robots.txt file whether or not it's um, available and I'm actually doing directory brute forcing or more content discovery based on what I get from the robots.txt so let's say that I have a website example.com I'm not actually going to just brute force for directories on the example.com but i'm going to look into robots.txt and then let's say that robots.txt gives me private the private folder and then that's the folder that i'm actually gonna start trying to do more content discovery on it but anyways the robots.txt is a document that tells search engines with pages of which pages they are and aren't allowed to show on their search engine results. So basically, robots.txt tells crawlers, tells YouTube, hey, YouTube bot, YouTube search bot, crawl bot, do not index the private folder on my website. These pages may be areas such as administration portals or files meant for the website customers. This file gives us a great list of locations on the website that owners don't want us to discover as penetration testers. So this is really important information for penetration testers. Take a look at the robots.txt file on the Acme IT support. Let's see if this one is accessible. Probably not, but it is accessible here in the attack box they've provided for us. And I've got to say that I subscribe to their premium for one month which is why this is actually going to be helpful for making these videos so it's not like i'm actually getting paid to do the videos but i'm actually paying to do the videos now figure that out 179 robots.txt we have the staff portal which is disallowed so if you go to the staff portal you found the robots.txt endpoint so it's probably slash forward slash staff portal manual discovery fav icon fav icon is actually used by search engines such as shodan as one of their ways to find out what was it i'm not even sure I think I've made a video on YouTube in which I'm actually building a Python script that does the fav icon search on Shodan or something like that. So the fav icon is the small icon displayed in the browser's address bar or tab used for branding a website. In this case, this is the fav icon for Try Hack Me. We don't have it. Um, we don't have it in here. That's interesting. It should also be here on Try Hack Me. But it is not. Matter of fact, it is. It's not in the URL, but it's it's in if I unpin this tab, this is actually the fav icon. And when it comes to Shodan, this is actually the fav icon. Sometimes when frameworks are used to build a website, a fav icon that is part of the installation gets left over. And if the website developer doesn't replace this with a custom one, this can give us a clue on what framework it's used. So one of the things, for example, if you're using Nuclei as a cybersecurity researcher, they have a fav icon feature. I, I think they have multiple fav icon yml uh, rules or what they call um, templates which actually look for f different fav icons and i've been most successful with the one for spring boot whenever i have a spring boot on one of the assets that i'm testing 
that's actually it's been very fruitful in terms of giving me vulnerabilities OWASP hosts a database of common framework icons you can use to check against I didn't know about this one these are actually probably the MD5s of the file icon or something in wiki format it's probably the MD5 regardless once we know the framework stack we can use external resources to discover more about it practical exercise on the attack box open the Firefox and enter the URL you don't have to do that on the attack box I think you can do that in the browser here as well probably if we look at the source you can see the images fav icon which is here which is very small if you run the following command on the attack box it will download the fav icon you don't have to do it on the attack box you can simply you can use curl that's right but you can simply right click on it here and save image as I mean this is like how to use the web one-on-one -on -one. what framework did the fav icon belong to CGI bin CGI Eric I R C I R O what's that CGI I R O let's see can we actually CGI IRC okay on the attack box open a terminal and type the command above you'd have to do the MD5 sum this is really interesting so if I'm actually this is why the attack box should be used in this particular scenario so let me see if I can actually copy this entire thing and then paste it here so curl then try to see if I can paste how do you actually paste from the real world into here mm. all right that was my Google assistant so how do you actually paste like that and then paste it here or what probably we can just MD5 sum I think I've talked about the MD5 sum or SHA-1 sum in a previous uh, video you can do SHA-1 sum as well so the MD5 sum is F27 let's see if it pastes it doesn't paste so we have to go back and forth through this freaking clipboard yep if we look it over here look it over with control F we can see that is CGI IRC but what I actually did was just to read what's inside this image sometimes that not might that might not be useful all right task number four sitemap XML unlike the robust.txt file which restricts what search engine crawlers can look at the sitemap XML gives a list of every file the website owner wishes to be listed on a search engine so act basically this could be the total opposite of the robots.txt because site XML which is a sitemap XML which is a map file actually tells you that it actually basically gives you a list of the locations that can be accessed on the website let's see if we have a sitemap.xml here we do what about here so it's https 10.10.57 or 179 slash sitemap XML it's actually HTTP simple not HTTPS 
and this is actually what we are receiving all the locations that are accessible on the website what is the path of the secret area that can be found in the sitemap XML so it's probably this one let's actually type it out so forward slash s3cr3t area HTTP header is really really important we've uh, briefly touched on them in the previous video when we looked at the developer tools but I want to say that as someone who's in cybersecurity as someone who's a practitioner you really need to know about HTTP header H HTTP headers HTTP request headers response headers how you can manipulate them in an unintended way so to speak when we make requests to the web server the server returns various HTTP headers these headers can sometimes contain useful information such as the web server software and possibly the programming scripting language in use so fellas I'm actually going to stop at 20 minutes so let's see 60 minutes in we're gonna go for four more minutes and then keep on in the in the next video in the example below we can see the web server is nginx version 118 and runs php 74 4.3 let's actually see that let's clear this curl http 10.10.57.1 one seven nine so actually come to think of it one more time this is more like real life stuff something that I would do in real life so so far it's been maintained real without uh, with the with the exception of uh, this first task and that's that's a good point for try hack me for this spur uh, this particular room and learning path with the minus v switch so if we do it with without the minus v we only get we don't we do not get the full response but we only get the output of the response so the data sort of like if you think of the response header you have the response headers and response data in this case we got the response data and then if we run that command one more time with the minus v we also get the request headers in this case and then we get the response header so the request is all the way up to here and then we have the response here and the response tells us so this is verbose it tells us that we're running nginx 118 we get another interesting header here which is probably the x flag header we're going to type it out thm Heather underscore flag framework stack once you've established the framework of a website either from the above fab icon example or by looking for clues in the page source and I've told you in the previous video that one of the extensions you could use is the Wappalizer and there's another one which is uh, called something with JS I've I also have the Shodan one, the Shodan one over here, which is really useful if you have the if you have access if you have a paid account on Shodan. So Webalizer tells you a lot about what's the technologies that are built on the tab that it's actually currently opened. For example, here we have something different than we have here we can learn more about the software possibly leading to more content we can discover so 
still remember we are looking for or we are on the content discovery thing let's see what this image is about maybe I'm gonna use this image as a um, thumbnail for the video looking at the page source of your Acme IT support website you'll see a comment at the end of every page and also a link to the frameworks website which is this one let's take a look at that website viewing the documentation page gives us the path of the frameworks administration portal which gives us a flag if you if viewed on the Acme IT support website I think we've gone through this in the previous video so we need to look into the change log we have a file called tmp.zip and we should be opening the tmp.zip In here so 10.10 tmp.zip maybe just maybe right let's use it with this clipboard copy it from here and then paste it in here the answer is not what is the flag from the frameworks administration portal we've taken a look in there viewing the documentation page so the documentation not the change log Let's see. All right, so this is actually installed in here. That's what happens when you don't read something, when you do not read the instructions entirely. And then paste it over there seriously THM what was it framework login yes so there was the admin admin which is completely unrealistic then we copy that change default credentials copy that and that's done so we should stop at task number six and then move on with the rest of the tasks which are six more in the next videos